We're going to have 2 Live Crew founder Luther Campbell on with us in a little bit. He's going to pop in. And I don't know what we're talking to him about. I know Billy is always here to talk to him about a number of different things. I suspect it'll be about the unhoused on Virginia Key, and perhaps they will have a political brawl of some sort, because I don't think that Luther and Billy have exactly the same politics. No, we don't. But, Roy, before we get to Luther Campbell, I see that Mike Ryan is doing around you what a lot of people do around Billy Corbin these days, which is get that perforated paper and seek advice on what the hell should I be doing with my ballot? How do I, whether it's mail-in or early, I don't know how to vote for commissioners. Who should I be voting for? And Billy's answer is always, well, I'll give you the least of the seven evils. Yeah, I would be doing the same thing, except I live in Broward. So uh, <laughs> nobody's perfect. So, yeah. Mike, what are you seeing there? Without boring the audience to tears, a lot of people will be doing this with Billy. I trust Billy with my ballot because I believe he will be more informed than most people on this. But I hate that every time I ask Billy anything, all he's ever saying is, these are really, really awful choices. You're just choosing <laughs> something that's going to be slightly less disastrous, but still disastrous. So these are uh, pretty big elec elections. There's... Uh... Congress representatives uh, uh, on the line right now. There's uh, circuit court judges, and you know that's mm. one of my passions. Is, <laughs> it's following the circuit court and making yeah. sure that we have the right people. There's in no place. way to make this segment entertaining, <laughs> but Billy does offer advice, and I want Billy to use. I want people to use Billy's information and expertise. Tell them where they can get information from you on how to vote if they care about this segment or care about this city. Can we maybe do sexy voice circuit court judge? Not you doing it. Oh, that right. makes no, it no better. Yeah, it, no. Sorry, sorry. it makes it worse. <laughs> you all right, you all right. doing it makes it very... Right. There's no way to make this entertaining, but tell people, without boring them with all of the choices that need to be make uh, made, help Mike Ryan and help the audience select their ballot. Yeah, it's a bad, bad ballot this year at the risk of stating the obvious. It's one of the worst I've ever seen. I think I mentioned it last week that like some of these and, and people always think, you know, some of the bigger assholes on social media would say, oh, Billy, it's so, so helpful when you post your sample ballot so I know who not to vote for. I can vote for the opposite. And meanwhile, my ballot this year has Republicans and has Democrats and has independents. It has a, a pretty cross section of the cesspool of incestuous corruption that is Miami-Dade County. The judges are hard because unless your attorney is practicing in front of them, you don't really know who these people are. So what I actually do is I go out into the community and I talk to a lot of lawyers. I look at what some of the Florida bar ratings and opinions are on some of these judges. Uh, and I, I provide on my Twitter account and on my Instagram page a sample ballot that that just says who my picks are these are not my picks for who i think is going to win they're not even people that i'm advocating for or endorsing or recommending these are just the picks based on the choices that we have uh here and one the, ter the terrible choices that we have in some cases they're terrible choices yes there's not a lot of there's not a lot of people on this ballot that i'm proud to vote mike for is but staring, there are mike is We're, staring I mean, at there's perforated papers there, there's some big ones here commissioner of agriculture seems like it's a it's a big one the one that i'm most interested in though is the 11th Judicial Court, the circuit judge election, because if you filled up a gas tank in South Florida, you're familiar with Mark Blumstein, whose whole campaign strategy is just advertised at gas stations. It gives me insight to where his political leanings may be. However, <laughs> he is going up against Ariel Rodriguez, who I am hoping is fake related to the fake Alex Rodriguez uh, shadow candidate. <laughs> and if so, I may vote just as an anarchy hmm. cast, for Ariel Rodriguez, if he indeed is a fake candidate. And also one of the things you'll notice about Mark Blumstein's ads is that he is in his, like, like military... Like, I always say thank you for your service uniform, anytime I'm pumping up gas. Which some people have argued is dubious with respect to ethics, that he's out there in his military uniform campaigning for judge on that. And I, I have heard that issue come up from some lawyers, but I will tell you the majority of, of people in the legal profession who have argued before Judge uh, Bloomstein have, have recommended him, and he is my so, pick on the ballot. Is so Mark go Bloomstein. with Mark? Yes, sir. Uh, we, we, we're not sure if Ariel Rodriguez is a real Ariel how many, Rodriguez. <laughs> how, many, real. how many shadow candidates are on the ballot, and <laughs> can you explain to me the controversy around the military uniform? Well, the controversy is simply an, it's an ethical issue is that here is a man who is run, a sitting judge running for judge. He and he is in his political ads. He is portrayed in his full kind of, you know, his full get up, which is it's nice to know that he served and 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 we can admire and respect him for that. But it becomes a little questionable ethically when you incorporate that into your Why political gas campaign. stations. It was pretty smart. I've noticed every gas station I, I pull into. There's an ad of his 
in full uniform. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the I, answer. I, to that. I, There's Billy, a lot of Billy, ads How can we sit here every week and go through the sewage septic tank that is corruption and politics in Miami? And you think the wearing of a military uniform is unethical or I or, or and I understand the conflict. I understand the conflict. And I understand that the the bar, you're not supposed to be uh, that the, the commercials, however it is that you go about making these commercials. I understand the ethical conundrum. I'm just laughing at the idea of ethics being considered at all in any of these elections. What I'm saying is that I've done like you said, I've done I've gone out and I've talked to people and I've done the research and I'm telling you what the worst thing people are saying saying about this guy is where does it scale in the world of of Miami politics I would say very very low but what I'm saying is that that's the worst thing they can say about him I also have people that I respect who really respect Ariel Rodriguez who is a real person and people are lawyers like him and ah, people are voting for strike him strike against but I <laughs> I'm just telling you he's yes a, I a rod is not on uh, right. on a lot of lawyers right. uh, list I'm gonna pick your brain after you get off the air and you're not gonna sway me we disagree on several things primarily Freedom Park but I do want to ask you one last question on the air is the congressional seat. That one seems like it's a big one. Maria Elvira Salazar. I don't like her, right? I don't like her. <laughs> you, I feel like I don't like her. Me? I think I've seen her like name her? before. I've seen I've seen clips and, and like uh, it taps into like the 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 America First thing. Maria Loca. Yeah. yeah. I, I she is not stable or well respected even in Republican circles and are you wait a second. You're a registered Republican. I am. Because this is a primary, yeah. so if Maria Elvira Salazar is on yeah. your ballot, you're a registered so Republican. I thought oh, I'll ab- talk to you later, Mike. No, I think you're a registered Republican, too, aren't you? No, or I'm did not. you switch? I was, I so, was an NPA, since uh, an unaffiliated independent, since I was 18 years so, old up until a few, couple years ago. So I registered, when I first registered, I obviously registered Republican. I haven't been Republican for the last, I'm going to say, five election cycles. Uh, I, I haven't agreed with the Republican Party on much of anything since... John McCain brought on Sarah Palin as a running mate. That's mm. kind of when that I was, was like, turning point. That was yeah, when that was really the seeds of what the Republican Party ended up catering to a little bit. Some would argue Reagan, but I'm just saying in my lifetime. <laughs> but I, in in a bit of anarchy, and this is what I really think is the best thing. I want to keep the Republican Party in check, and I feel like if I can still vote in the Republican right. primaries, I can say that the loudest voices in the room don't necessarily dictate what should be the Republican Party when it comes to whether it be geopolitical policy or fiscal conservatism, some of the things that I may be more in line to agree with, or at least I was when I was a certain age. I just want to make sure that I work against America first Trump Republicans, and I can't do that if I can't vote in these primaries. It's very sophisticated. You know what they normally say is that a Republican under 30 has no heart and a Democrat over 30 has no brain. So you're you're still you're you're on you're on the you're on the side of good here though you're on the side of the gods. I think that makes me the cowardly lion. Yeah. <laughs> Luther Campbell is now with us. He is joining us uh, from what looked like a sunshine soaked golf course. Do you guys have any bones to pick with Luther Campbell as NIL makes an appearance as the University of Miami is back in the game as uh, he is putting on uh, social media private jets and things he needs to not be doing. I can't uh, tell uh, you anything. There were off-air conversations that I wanted to have with Luther Campbell about, uh, hey, maybe don't uh, tweet out private jets. I understand you have an empire of your own, Luke, but uh, on signing day, <laughs> probably not the greatest of looks. The hell, Luke? That's a hell of an intro. Well, I just can't believe after all these years again, I mean, it's been 25 years since I told you be careful about the stuff that you're doing around the University of Miami. And again, again, Luke, again, hey, now, hey, what are you doing? Listen, if, if, if NILs were, if NILs were legal when you were going to University of Miami, Dan, you would be sitting in this seat right now. You made it of, uh, of, of, of finding corruption when you 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 made a living off of discovering NILs before NIL was actually happening. I was on your side. It is I, not what NIL should be compared to. For the record, no, I know you've no, spoken Dan, to compliance. Dan, Let's chill out. Dan harassed me, Mike. You with me, Mike? Dan harassed me at golf course. See, remember the golf course. That's why I say golf course. I'm not at a golf course. He harassed me. The man ran me down at every golf course I went to. Asked me, did I pay Tiger? Williams or whatever his name's in Charles Farm. Tiger Clark. Know. Tiger Clark. Not Tiger Williams. Tiger Williams. I didn't Williams. even pay them. Those were the wrong people I, that 
Those weren't the, the people player? you paid. They were other people you were paying. Those weren't the people you paid. <laughs> I'm a Vancouver Canucks. Tiger Woods. Out of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, 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 I don't know why you didn't interview. But in the and in you, I'm mad with you because you, your damn friend, you were supposed to, you were supposed to crucify Dan. Dan, you brought down, you single handedly brought down the University Look, of Miami. People, people wanted me to crucify you, you, Luke. They wanted me to crucify you. you. You let Dan off the hook. Oh, come on. Got all these people on here right uh -huh. now. And the and the one black guy. You <laughs> yeah, the one the black guy didn't vote for you when you ran for mayor. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh, hey, wait a, a second. Shit. You didn't vote in Coconut Grove. That's true. That's true. Shut up. That's true. <laughs> Why the black man don't do enough talking on this show, Dan? I talk plenty, Luke. Okay, well, you need to point your face to the to the thing. They got you pointing that way. Point your face to the mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to see you. Is that better? Yeah. I represent the I, I represent the NABJ. So do the I. Association of Black Journalists. And so do you, I. I'm a call I'm member. your representative. Don't let Dan put you on the back burner. Who's putting him on the back burner? You're not. You are a, deflecting, my black friend. Burner. You are not a member of the National Black Association of Journalists. What are you talking about? <laughs> all this all this is to say, please stop tweeting photos of private jets on signing day. Listen, listen. Come on, Mike. We got. <laughs> Listen, Mike, it's, all, it's by all means necessary. I coach high school football. I got to figure out a way to get some guys. Luther. Card carrying. I card know. Carrying. Roy, Roy just whipped out an, uh, an, a card carrying yeah. journalist. Uh, you are not a card carrying journalist. Yes. <laughs> Luther no, Campbell no, just no, pretended no. to be a journalist. You impo that was an yes. imposter is what you are. In the, in the words of Cleavon Little, excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Luke, how, ex how excited are you that Miami is spending big money to actually play legitimate professional minor league football? <laughs> Luke's always been spending big money for, for the Miami Hurricanes to play professional football. Listen, man, I, I'm I'm really excited. I just want to, I, I just hope that, you know, the, the, the man's stock went up and the stock went down. So sh I, I'm just hoping we still got some money to pay the people. <laughs> 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 we started paying people off the stock was at ten dollars, <laughs> and now it's at one dollar. Mike, the, the, the victory is that the saga actually went public. So we cashed out, and he ain't the oh. only guy out there, Luke. As I'm sure oh. you've heard, hey. but, <laughs> just, but just no. play it cool. <laughs> I'm excited. Hey, hey, Dan, I'm really excited. Let me be politically correct. I'm happy that we're paying people. I think you. The billionaire you are, you went to the University of Miami. You need to be putting to, you need to be doing NILs for University of Miami players. Agreed. Now, well, so Luke. You and Billy. You Luke, and Billy. Agreed. Well, Luke, I'm happy to announce we will have some news. It's an announcement of an upcoming announcement. I am happy <laughs> to announce that we will be doing what you're asking us to do in very short order. Oh my. Dan hey, Levitard hey, is baby. going to eschew his his reputation amongst UM fans who absolutely despise him, and he's going to put his money where his mouth is, and he is going to enter the NIL fray. Boy, the, the NCAA is going to come in here like the FBI at, at, at Mar-a-Lago. We <laughs> have oh, what a great day that was. Oh, I, oh, Billy, oh. I have done all the work with compliance. Uh -huh. I have had several calls with UM compliance mm -hmm. officers. I am making sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed, and we are in line to announce shortly our very first NIL deals. The NCAA rating meadow lark <laughs> that's what you're gonna, you're gonna hey, they got enough go problems with just me because then i'll be doing a column on dan in the miami new time uh oh is that a threat oh because he's allegedly yes a card carrying member of the black <laughs> journalist i seem going to a lot of ethics conventions on <laughs> I, I i can't wait till somebody having to f watch miami highlight battle court is uh, an ncaa infraction I want to talk to you, Luke, because you've played the politics game in Miami. You've tried to make your voice heard. You've run uh, for office, uh, and I've heard some of what you've had to say about uh, the unhoused on Virginia Key. Uh, Billy, before we ask Luke about that, do you want to catch people up on the latest developments? The latest since last week when uh, Commissioner Joe Carollo had proposed a really a homeless transition center, really a homeless encampment on 
the North Point Park of Virginia Key, uh, famous for its nature preserve, famous for being home to the historic uh, Black Beach, the Black Only Beach back in the Jim Crow South era of of Miami. Um, And uh, now Mayor Francis Suarez has come out with Joe Carollo and said that they're going to put a pin in that plan for six months. Clearly, since business doesn't get done in Miami in the sunshine in public meetings, because Francis Suarez doesn't show up to a public meeting unless he's being paid as a lobbyist for a millionaire, a billionaire, sports team owner or real estate huckster. So he, of course, does all he took Joe back and said, like, I don't want to have to veto this or not veto this. Don't make me look bad or have to make a hard decision. Why don't we go and have a a press conference that we're not going to do this for now and just kick the can down the road. And Joe, of course, came out. Joe, you know, is Luke's BFF. Um, the, he came out and said that people were playing the race card here. Luke was playing the race card when he brought up the historic Virginia Key Beach uh, and was, uh, you know, and was basically not fighting fair. So Joe is definitely going to bring this up again and try to and try to bring this homeless encampment back. But for now, he's been pacified by Francis Suarez. They made some kind of shady backroom deal, and Luke was playing the race card. Was it the noise that made them back off? What happened here? Oh, hell yeah. What happened, Luke? Luke was noisy, man. Luke was noisy. (laughs) Well, well, I mean, here it is in a nutshell, uh, Dan. When you get, see, normally me and Billy, uh, two ships selling and shooting in different directions, you put both of us together <laughs> and, and shooting at one ship, it becomes catastrophic. So, yes, it was the noise of, of me and Billy both going hard at them. And then, you know, and then those the, the people over there who were doing all the protests, the people who were trying to preserve uh, the rich uh, uh, life over there for all the animals that, that are over there. Those people, you know, they they were more instrumental in, in uh, doing the petition. They got over... 10, 15,000 people to sign the petition, more than these guys get votes. And uh, that kind of that kind of uh, made them get a little quiet on that issue. But the race card, Luke, Joe Carrillo, yeah, I mean, your, your I mean, best friend. I, let me tell you, let me tell you, Dan, that was, the, I'm, I'm 60. You know, I'm older than you. That was the only place my parents could take me and my brothers to swim. You know, and I, I I I let them know that I had to remind them that because every now and then, sometimes people around here forget the history and they forget the fact that there are still some real Miamians that live here. You know, that beach was the only beach, and it still is today because they don't want us on South Beach. That beach is the only beach. That's why I ain't at your studio today because of, in fear of going to jail or walking by black being black. You know, he's the only black guy that has a card still. Able to go. It is. Here. It's his card that Jesus. gets him past all the securities here. It's his. <laughs> it's his card but, carrying but, uh, black journalist uh, card. Yeah. But but yeah, man. I mean, I mean, you know the history of, of Miami Beach and all the other beaches where black folks had to be on the beach at six o'clock. It couldn't. You know, they couldn't stay and they could not get in the water. And that was our only beach. And so they preserved that beach as a historical, you know, national park to put a homeless shelter right next to it. That, I mean, that's crazy. They already knew. If they put a homeless shelter next to it, and the first thing I was saying is automatically you're going to deem it commercial because you have to, you have to uh, change the, you 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 got to change the, the 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 restrictions and the bylaws to make it a, a, a place where you can stay at. Once they do that, once they change those uh those laws, then that then brings in the contractors, and so we expose that. Me, Billy, and everybody else say, look, we know what y'all guys are trying to do. Y'all trying to build some condos to overlook Fisher Island, which is going to cost 15 million a, a condo. And what people don't realize, they say, well, we're not going to do that because it's a waste field next to it. Well, if you remember before the hurricane, the waste field was a zoo. That was a zoo. And so they just changed it and turned it into a waste field, moved the zoo. They could easily, you know, easily turn that back into, you know, easily zone it back for for commercial use. Well, that's the play, is it yeah. not? They're just trying to steal the land, correct? That's all it is. Yep. You ain't gonna put no home. You're, listen, man, let's be real. You're not gonna have a homeless shelter in the in the back window of other people from Fisher Island. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, a, it's a commercial play. It's it. I mean, once you deem it, and and and, and we had uh, Billy, good friend. On on a space 
uh, his good friend that's running for Congress. I ain't gonna call his name because I don't want to give him no extra advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> he basically said it was gonna be a concentration camp. You know, some Ross out of out of the book of Ross Perot, where they're gonna put a big fence around it. Just just think about this. Right across the street from Seaquarium, you have a concentration camp with a fence around it. You're gonna build some little huts and you're gonna bust people in from downtown to Key Biscayne to then stay there. I'm like, that that that's not gonna work. That that ain't it's gonna it's gonna be women getting raped. It's going to be kids getting raped in there. It's going to be so much crime. The place is going to be raided. And then that's when they're going to create this big old smoke screen. Oh, we need to build a new building. But then it would have always already been moved to commercial property uh, because they would have had to uh, go and do, do the process. That, that's a big money grab. That's what we do around here, Dan. But Luke... Oh. Do the money grab, Dan. It's your people who do yeah. that. Well, and you have to remember, of course, there's the... Um, My people. Whoa, don't wait, do, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. My people. I mean, he ain't wrong. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> it is, Dan. The Cubans do go through those coffers. I can't... How, how do whoa. I... How do wait I, a second. Hang on, though. Hang on. Time out now. Christine... It ain't really people. Whoa. Cri it ain't my people, Dan. Oh, it's oh, oh, Luke. Oh, Luke. Oh no! My, my favorite uncle. Hang on now. The peep, the people who voted for this. There was three votes for this on the dais at the Miami City Commission. Joe Carollo, who hatched this harebrained scheme. Alex Diaz Laportia, who was a no before he was a yes. That that was some shady shit we can talk about later. But the third vote was Christine King, who is the puppet of Keon Hardiman and the Hardiman crime family, who you are, they're your BFFs. Jo oh, so, so two, two out of the three votes, this, Luke. The two, race card. Two out of three uh, votes, Interesting. Luke. My people were in there. Two out of three uh, votes yes. for this scheme uh, uh, Carollo, were your people. Uh, yes, you you campaigned uh, for uh, these uh, folks. Interesting. Three Americans. This and by the way, I, when I say your people, I don't mean black, I don't mean white, I don't mean Cuban, no, I don't mean Jewish. Your, I mean your, your, your people. people. These your, are, you support that. You help them get elected. These criminals. These criminals. Criminals. Listen, Cubans and blacks are finally working together. <laughs> <laughs> to do corrupt shit? What do you say? <laughs> hey, listen, man. Oh, by... yo, mio. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Christine King is is upset with me that I did not campaign for her. For the record, hmm. I do campaign for Keon Hardiman. And me and Christine, you know, we're okay. But in Corroyo, I could talk to Corroyo because <sighs> beats the man up so much. I can have a, a reasonable comment. Suarez, that's my good friend. I basically raised him. Uh oh, he's good friends with Suarez. How in God's <laughs> name have you heard the things that Billy has said about Suarez? I, I listen, man, Billy was in the pool swimming with Suarez. He didn't tell you that part, and his dad. We were raising money for kids. We were raising money for the parks in the city of Miami. Billy, Bi Billy beats up on these people. He support them people, then he beat up on them. I he never I When did I support thee, first of all? When did I Carver, support them? You didn't support Kava? Danielle Levine Kava? I absolutely did endorse Danielle Levine Kava. And you beat her up now. Because she was, I don't beat her up. I tell the truth, Luke. I'm not in a cult, no, man. You're, you're, I don't, you're, I'm not you're in a right. cult. Look, you're right. He did endorse her, and she betrayed him. She, she didn't did. betray me. She betrayed the people of Miami-Dade County. She went back on her commitment to be a reformer. She went back on her commitment to be a progressive. She went back on her commitment to move Miami forward out of the cesspool of corruption we've been in. Look at and how decided happy, to look swim at, around look in the at, swamp. Look at that gap tooth smile I've been watching but for I'm, 40 years. He finally look, got you. Look at him. I you pissed not, him off. That's exactly what he wanted to do. It's all he came here for. That's it. Look at him. He's applauding. <laughs> look at how delighted he is because he's gotten you enraged. He's gotten you totally out of your face melting rage. I'm not in a cult. I, none of these people are my friends. They are politicians. They are public officials. And they are entitled to every bit of criticism that we can rightfully, factually, and truthfully throw at them. I don't care if they, you know, uh, listen, I know 
Keon Hardiman is your friend. He supported the the Liberty City uh, Warriors, the Optimist League, which is which is a good thing, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate you, you that you are a transparent and transactional guy. You say he's my guy because he did an X X Y and Z for me, did a good thing, and I appreciate that. The truth of the matter is, though, is that if they're corrupt, they're corrupt. I don't care if they're white, if they're black, if they're Cuban, if they're Venezuelan, if they're Colombian, if they're a Democrat, if they're a Republican. If I voted for them or not. In fact, if I did vote for them, I have more of a responsibility. To call them out Dan, on their shit. Dan, yes, Luke. Dan, Billy introduced me to Philip Levine. Asked me to come to a meeting with Philip Levine. Me and him went over to Miami Beach when he was the mayor. And then Billy abused Philip Levine. I abused him? I abused him? Jeffrey Epstein's BFF? I, <laughs> I, I, ab- I abused him? How did I abuse him exactly? <laughs> oh, God. Hey, hey, they were friends. They were friends. He was like... I, hey, I'm not Luke, friends with any mayor, good dude. Good guy. Good mayor. Who, said, before, who said that? You said that. You brought me over there to meet the man. I brought you over to meet the guy. What does that mean? Yeah, we, I've been to prison to meet murderers. I've been to prison to in, to, to interview no, see, criminals. No, I what think, do you say? Luke, I think you're right about this one. I don't think he knows what it means to ask Luke to come to a meeting to meet somebody. He thinks that's a neutral thing. You ask Luke Hang to on meet a somebody. Hang on a second. You're, exactly. You're, you're, you're making an ask. You're making a request. You're he, making a request. You say, I'm assuming this guy's kosher. I wasn't making a love connection. That, that was a Jewish reference, I'm pretty sure. Phil Levine, that was a Jewish reference. He, well, he needed your help thing. to see if it was I, kosher. Yes. I, 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 just because exactly. the, guy wanted, the guy wanted to meet you. I said, you want to come and meet the mayor of Miami Beach? You said, yeah, I'll come meet the mayor of Miami Beach. I, I don't really see what the what he, the issue. I wasn't what, trying to make what, a love. This wasn't J Day. Luke I is saying he's your boy. You you he would not be in Luke's life he, if you had not been the bridge of connection. Thank you, Dan. So, thank. Well, what does that have? To, well, what does that have to do with anything? It means you're an never, asshole. Well, I, I'm Whoa. not denying that. I'm not denying that. But what does this mean? I don't I don't understand the position here. He, I don't understand the, the argument. Never, would you would you would you would you take Dan in to a meeting with Joe Carrillo. Oh, absolutely. I think that would be fucking hilarious. You think you can get a meeting with Joe Carrillo and take Dan in there? Well, what difference did what well, what does that mean though? That means be, just because I can get a meeting a with someone. Around, that, with him. I, I, I have a cell phone. Should we call him right now? Let's call him. A relationship. It, he what Luke is saying is if you lubricated the bridge to power in Miami Beach, you, it makes you uh, culpable. It makes you an accomplice. It makes you you are vouching you. for this person the way that you vouch that that people what? get vouched for when no, making hang, when when crime families are meeting at the top of the on. food chain. They don't want to talk to Thank me. You. They don't want to talk to Dan. me because I tell the truth about them. They won't talk to me because I don't have a price. They won't talk to me because they can't control me, Uncle Luke. Has chilled, has mellowed out a little bit. He's like, I'll I'll transact with people and I'll do business with people and I'll talk to people of all. I I appreciate that and I appreciate again his transparency and his transactional nature. But I'm not like that. I'm just not. Are you saying that Luke has a price? What I'm saying is that listen, when Luke ran, yes, I do. Okay, there you go. go. When Luke ran for mayor, I voted for him. (laughs) I got a price. I can't. (laughs) There it is. You know what my price is? Doing the right thing for the black community. If you're going to give me something for the black community that we have not been getting, yes, that is definitely my price. I will sit down with Trump if I have to. Oh, which wait I, a minute now. Wait yeah, minute. but that's fair. I res- but I respect that. I respect I, Uncle it, Luke it, for that. We Listen, listen. I'm not with the Democrat, the, the Republican, the, all this, the independent, the moderate. All. Black community have been shorted for so many years. So I sit down with all these people. Look, this is what we need. I don't care who it is. I know a lot of people do some shady things. We live in a banana republic, and we know all of them do shady things. I don't understand how people make $8,000 and $60,000, and when they retire, they are millionaires in politics. I don't understand that. But if I can get some things done, get a whole park at Liberty City, at Hadley Park, renovate it, remodeled classrooms, gymnasiums, funding for the kids to bring tutoring programs, then I'm gonna sit down and have a conversation with you. Regardless of how much how how, how you how many dealings you got with 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 how many developers, okay, I already know you're gonna do your thing. I can't stop that. But if I can get some things done in the black community, 
that we don't have, then I'm a, I'm a, I, I got to sit down with these people, Dan. When Uncle Luke ran for mayor of Miami-Dade County in 2011, I campaigned for him. I supported him. He got 11 percent of the vote, which actually forced the top two vote getters into a runoff. Luke was able to get enough of the vote in the double digits to force that runoff. And then the, can- the candidates started to court Luke for his endorsement. So he would bring his 11 percent of voters, certainly enough to to win uh, the, uh, the popular vote at that point or the runoff vote at that point. And Uncle Luke had a meeting with Carlos Jimenez. A man we've discussed in this program, a a, a rotten, corrupt guy. And Uncle Luke came out of that meeting and said, Carlos Jimenez has my endorsement because he told me he would do X, Y, and Z for my community. And Carlos Jimenez immediately goes, oh, hell no, no, that's not what I said. I didn't promise him that. And Luke says, what are you talking about? You said that to my face. And I said, I love Uncle Luke because he went in. He made the deal. He came out. He said, this is the guy who's going to do something for my community. And I'm going to, of course, that guy immediately went, had to lie about it, of course. But I, I respect Luke's transparency and his position on this. I'm a white guy in America. I don't need anything. I, I'll call this shit out wherever I see it. I understand. And, and I'll do it, hopefully, in furtherance of giving people a platform who don't have a voice or trying to make things a little bit better in communities who have representation, like the, like the Hardeman crime family, who take advantage of their constituency and take advantage uh, crime of family. Hey, I calls it like I sees it, man. Okay, they are. They are. It is what it is. But I will Hardeman say, Hardeman is a good guy. He's I, a no, good guy. Get out of here, dude. But what I'm saying is, though, is Uncle Luke. What Uncle Luke said is that he, if he became the mayor, he would be the most transparent politician in history because he would have cameras following him around at all times in all meetings behind all closed doors to do a reality show or a documentary or a documentary series about it. And and I still think that would be a phenomenal idea, whether it's mayor, whether it's Congress. Congress, whether whatever it is, Uncle Luke, you would be the most transparent guy because you'd be out here, say, you know, telling it like it is, and with cameras following you around at all times. So when are you running for office, and for what office will you run? Oh, there we go. So, this, so Dan, you you gonna sit there and let all this happen? I, I want to see if you have news to break. You've run for office before. I want to see if you're going to announce right now publicly that Luke has political aspirations after a couple of campaigns that uh, that had some power behind him. So, so, yes, he is going to let it happen, Luke. Let me tell you, I, I'm really seriously thinking about mayor mm. of Miami-Dade County. That means I have to move back into the county, which is not a problem. And then part of me is thinking about Congress because Frederica Wilson represents now a large part of uh, Miami Beach. And uh, I got a lot of friends who I went to school with over there that'll vote for me. You know, I'm I'm thinking about both of them. I do have political aspirations. I think you pull off those cowboy hats. Those Frederica Wilson cowboy you, you hats. You gotta love going from uh, two live crew uh, to uh, take the lyrics to the Supreme Court to Congressman Luther Campbell. God Almighty, we that are. That sounds better, we, Dan. What you we, think? We are old, is what I think. I think I can't believe that you. That's you being the establishment. That it. It's all going to end with Luther Campbell in power, in making rules, making rules on behalf of Long. jurisdictions, making laws. I will be your congressman, Dan. <laughs> I think your campaign should have curses in, though, right? Like, it should be, I'll be your fucking congressman, right? I can't wait to see the attack ads. That should be interesting. Two live congress. I know, right? I know the attack ads would be brilliant. They would have me with all the girls shaking their ass like they got some little kid in the background uh, in a porno. All right, good enough. See you later, Luke. Uh, thank you. I think that time is done. I think we're not doing it that way anymore. Uh, thank you, sir. Oh, you done got politically correct. I see Dan. Good, good. See you later, Roy. <laughs> see you, Luke. We'll my see, man. He'll see you at the next meeting, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Miami is more tribal than the average place in the United States, even though, or in the world, although I suspect I'm going to find tribalism just about everywhere. So when Luther Campbell says that my people are corrupt and he is correct, uh, we also have... Uh, a division, right, between uh, Haitian Americans. Why don't you tell people the story here locally because of a political ad that was mailed to voters' home and it published uh, judge's cell number and uh, tell the people the details on where it is that Haitian Americans are not feeling supported. Miami is uniquely corrupt, but there's a diversity of corruption. It's not unique to any particular color or nationality or I mean, it's <laughs> so the idea that it's like your people or my people, it's it's a lot of people and, and it doesn't seem to have a lot of 
uh, borders when it comes to the corruption. But there is a lot of tribalism when it comes to our politics here. I often describe Miami as, you know, Game of Thrones in paradise with iguanas and gators instead of dragons, you know, and like that's what it's like. We have our fiefdoms. We plan our flags. There's um, there's battles and wars between, you know, you shouldn't get into a road rage incident in Miami until you see which flag is flying from the rear view mirror, you know, it's like it's that it is that intense. And you will go through blocks of Miami Beach where there is a Brazilian flag, then there's a Venezuelan flag, then there's a Cuban flag, then there's a Guatemalan flag, the Dominican flag and so on. There are blocks and neighborhoods and in fact, entire cities and municipalities that are that have been kind of uh, uh, we have self segregated uh, in that way. And that always seems to seep into our politics What it rarely seeps into is in judicial politics those very those super sexy circuit uh court races that we were talking about with mike um but it has happened uh it has happened and it is a huge scandal there was a big press conference this week with haitian american leaders because um the diaz de la portilla uh political dynasty the political crime family that has been plaguing miami-dade county with their corruption uh, and racism and demagoguery for generations, brother after brother after brother, just shitting all over this state and this community. Um, one of these characters, Renier or Renier Diaz de la Portilla, is now running for judge against um, a judge uh, who is the first Haitian American judge in the history of uh, Miami Dade County. Fred Serafin. Fred Serafin. Um, Listen, everybody has problems with judges, right? Judges can be assholes. They can be ego cases. Some lawyers like them when they're winning. They hate them when they're losing. The guy has his issues, but is otherwise a very respect, uh, respected judge in Miami-Dade County. Again, the first Haitian-American judge. Renier diaz Portia and his political crime family um, have decided to take this guy on. Renier is a mess. This is a guy who is a kind of perennial loser in politics, in life. He runs... His law office out of like his parents mattress, empty mattress warehouse. He was he was forced to resign before he was fired from the uh, from the uh, hang on. I got I got to read this. I want to get this right. He was an assistant public defender in Miami Dade County. Uh, and he was essentially they said, listen, if you don't resign uh, and spare yourself the embarrassment of being fired, it's going to be a mess. So they said that he had violent mood swings. He became insanely and instantly irate for no good reason. He was chronically absent. He blew off his bosses and was disrespectful to other attorneys who had to pick up his slack because he was failing his clients. And these are pretty desperate clients. They need help from a public defender. Um, he was an ab they called him, quote, unstable, entitled, lazy and absent, end quote. And this is a guy who also got into a fist fight outside of a Spanish language radio station when a, a Miami city commissioner back in 2000 was on the radio, called his dad a drug dealer because his dad got uh, popped for marijuana back in the day, charges that were dropped. But the guy shows up after he comes from his brother Alex Diaz Laportia as a, a political event for losing the Miami mayor's race. Rennie here shows up and he starts banging on the door and the woman who's hosting the show is like, Mary says, literally, Mary, mother of God, the Diaz La Portillas are here. Send help. Listeners start dialing 911 and there is a bloody fist fight in the parking lot of the Spanish language radio station. He's got an anger problem. He's got all kinds of problems. And now he's running to be a judge in Miami-Dade because, well, because Miami. And what did he and or his people do to Fred Serafin? So his brother, Alex Diaz La Portilla, who is a corrupt commissioner in the city of Miami, he has a political committee who put out these insanely racist, lying and misleading mailers. Uh, not atypical in Miami-Dade politics, but really not permitted in these judicial races because they're not only committed to um, the typical kind of uh, uh campaign laws and things but in judicial races in particular there's also ethical considerations there are certain uh professional uh considerations and things they are allowed and not allowed to do and so what they did was they put out a flyer that published fred seraphin's phone number his cell phone number on the flyer said to call him and tell him to release his criminal record because he is a criminal who committed an armed robbery and refuses to discuss his secret criminal past Judge Serafin has talked quite openly about this arrest because he was racially profiled and falsely arrested for a crime he did not commit, was exonerated for it, and it is part of his personal journey and origin story as a jurist. It's the reason he decided 
to get into the law. It's the reason he went to law school, became an attorney, later became a judge, because he wanted to combat this type of uh, racism and this type of crimes against innocent people from being committed. So So wronged there and now being weaponized uh, and being taken out of context to simply smear him with uh, not even partial truths, but misrepresented truths. Deliberately about his criminal record, which is a violation of all kinds of ethical canons with respect to the Florida Bar, the Florida Judicial Qualifications Commission. It's not inconceivable, by the way, if he were to be elected, that he could be removed from office because of this. And already uh, there's been a complaint filed against Diaz Laportilla with the Florida Bar, with the Florida Judicial Qualifications uh, Commission. Um, They have... And it's very clearly, incidentally, an effort to exploit a and this is an issue here. We have a lot of candidates in Dade County who change their name to Hispanic surnames or they take the 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 last name of a husband or a spouse that they've never used before. But now that they're running for office, better better names to use in in our voting system. And they're deliberately running against this Haitian American judge and attempting to vilify this man of color with demonstrable lies that is that's frightening to have somebody levying a judgment on you for racial bias that that's just that's well just to ridiculous. continue and i'll be a judge yeah that, that's that's just oh my god and um uh jc planus a very prominent um uh, former republican uh state representative former elections attorney for the miami-dade republicans uh he he is actually filed those complaints against Diaz Laportilla. And uh, he has called on three mayors in Miami-Dade County, Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, Coral Gables Mayor Vince Lago, and Hialeah Mayor uh, Esteban Bovo to revoke their very loud public endorsements of Renier Diaz Laportilla because of this uh, racist lying attack against Are Judge Fred Serafin. I'll give you three guesses, Dan. Okay, no and no and no. Uh, thank you, Billy. We will talk to you again next week. You will tell people how to vote next week, correct? We've got to get over oh. the next couple of weeks. We've got uh, important uh, power that needs to be distributed. We forgot about t- uh, Ken Russell. Ken oh, Russell, we next week. Oh. Next week we will talk about Ken Russell. We will Bumped make him. time for Ken Russell talk next week. Thank you, Billy. Cocaines.